Hello everyone, thanks for joining me. I'm your YouTube host, Stephen Quinn, and this is another episode of Driving with Stephen. And today's a little bit special. I normally drive around Southern Arizona as we have these videos put together. But today I'm actually up in Salt Lake City, Utah, uh, driving around that area. So I wanted to hit on a topic that has been asked of me, and I thought, what a better, better topic than to discuss what is a subject to transaction when it comes to real estate. And so I, I, for those of you who may be the first video you've ever seen, I am a real estate investor. And um, this is a strategy that I, I hold dear and I love because it is such a benefit to everyone involved and uh, works really well for me as an investor as well because it doesn't require near as much uh, capital to buy a property. So when you hear these, these terms that you can buy homes with little to no money down, this is one of those kinds of strategies. So I wanted to just hit on the overview a little bit. So first of all, it's not subject to, it's subject TO, subject to the existing financing. So what this really means is we're going to be buying a property and leaving the existing mortgage in place while we rehab it and fix it up and do things and be able to move on. So let's talk about this a little bit. So I wanna set up a scenario just to kind of solidify what we're talking about. So let's imagine we've got a homeowner out there who's fallen on hard times, whatever it is, they're getting behind on their mortgage and now they're facing foreclosure. Um, they don't have the funds to get caught up and so what you can do is come in as an investor and say, look, I understand that you're going to go into foreclosure, uh, which would be very, very bad for your credit. So how about I come in, I will pay your mortgage for you and get your loan caught up. That'll pull you out of the foreclosure. And then I'm willing to pay you a little bit of money from your equity in your house, you know, a few thousand dollars to help you, you know, find a new place to live and be able to move on from this debt burden. So this is how we make a win for the homeowner. The second part of this is the win that we create for the bank. Uh, the bank does not want to foreclose on a house. They would prefer that they make their principal and interest. Um, that's who they are. They do not want to hold real estate. So when we can go to them and say, here is the money to catch this person up. I'm going to be making the payments on their behalf. Um, that makes the bank happy. Now, uh, there is some caveats to these things. One of them that I do like to point out that's a biggie is there's something called a due on sale clause. When we're going through this process, we're gonna actually buy the home and have it deeded into our name, but the mortgage is still left in the existing homeowner's name. And it is very possible that a bank could call that note due and say, look, you sold the house, now you owe us everything. Uh, the truth of it is, that's a rare circumstance, but know that it exists. Most of the time you're gonna be rehabbing this property, you're only gonna have it for a couple of months, while you get it back for sale and sold, at which point when you resell it, that an existing mortgage will be paid off and everything will be happy again. Now, let me stop right here because I'm spitting out a whole lot of stuff. Number one, please understand that I need you to be educated to be able to do these kinds of tactics. I'm not telling you a five minute YouTube video to run out there, go do it yourself. But I want you to understand that these ideas exist and that they're possible. But please go go learn more. You know, I'm just a real estate investor speaking from experience. Uh, the laws and things are going to be different in different states. So be smart. Um, but that being said, so now we've got a win for the bank. They were able to get that mortgage producing again. It's receiving money um, and it's doing what it needed to do. So the part that's so cool for me is let's say that that was a two hundred thousand dollar house, and I now bought it for the cost of closing costs, for the few thousand dollars to get the mortgage current and, and mortgage payments paid, and some extra money to help that person move on to get them out of the home so I can work on it. And so now I own a $200,000 property, but I only spent maybe 10 grand getting it. Now I'm an investor and I want to increase my profits, so I'm going to go in and spend even more money rehabbing the property in order to increase the equitable value and then turn around and sell that property and keep that extra for me. But here's what's so great is I made a profit, but now I did all this work and facilitated solving this problem for somebody and did that on a $200,000 purchase, but only had to spend 20, maybe $30,000 of that. So if you think that is, cool and, and amazing, 
Um, I definitely love to speak with you about it. I'm always looking for other investors to join my team, for folks learning how to do this. Um, I do mentor. Um, so, so let's you know talk about it. The other side of the story is if you're watching this video going, I'm that distressed homeowner, is there a possibility for me? Definitely reach out to me. Um, I will leave a link at the end of this video so that you can have that possibility come into play. So take the opportunities, um, understand that there's creative strategies out there that work, that they benefit everyone involved. We don't have to stomp on anybody's toes. We kept the homeowner from going into foreclosure. We saved their credit when that mortgage gets paid and now their credit reports that they paid off a house. Um, the bank didn't lose in that circumstance. They got their mortgage paid off. So there's some amazing, amazing concepts that you can uh, enjoy as long as you understand it. So take that for what it's worth. We're gonna catch you on the next one, but thanks for watching.